This portion of the 9 to 5 Outlaw Reviews is brought to you by the Feminists Against Porn Coalition, or simply FAP. And now, on with the presentation. Shock Suspense Stories. Here's a gripping tale of tension with an electrifying final twist. Confession, a shock suspense story. It was nearly midnight when Arthur Keenan swung his gray sedan into the deserted street. The beam from the single headlight cut through the darkness illuminating the road ahead. Arthur strained his eyes and cursed. Damn busted headlight, I better have it fixed first thing in the morning. I can't see a thing this way. Suddenly, the long headlight beam fell upon something lying on the cobblestones ahead of Arthur's slowly moving car. Arthur gasped. What's that? Good lord, it's a body, a woman, she's been hurt. Arthur slammed on the brake and his car squealed to a stop. The figure in the headlight beam lay motionless in a pool of blood. Arthur leaped on the car and rushed to the prostrate woman's side. She's still alive. She's been hit by a car. I, I, I got to get help. Uh, a doctor. Arthur looked around frantically. The dark faces of the building loomed up about him. This was a factory section where no lights, no phones available at this hour. Arthur darted back to his car. Mustn't move her. Have to get to a phone. Have to call an ambulance. She's, she's dying. Arthur backed up his car hurriedly. The gears coughed the protest as he meshed them into first and sped off down the dark street. At that moment, a police patrol car turned the corner behind him. Look, Flag, there's someone lying in the gun. And that car's hightailing it out of there. Let's go. The patrol car surged forward, skidding to a stop beside the injured woman. She's been hit by a car. See what you can do, Flag. I'm going after that lousy hit and run. The police named Flag leaped from the squad car. Okay, Wally, radio in for an ambulance. I'll wait here and get him. Don't worry. The squad car rolled off in pursuit as the officer remained stooped over the crumpled form. An ambulance won't do this gal any good. She's, she's dead. Meanwhile, Arthur Keenan sped through the deserted factory section, looking for an open dime, a police call box, anything that might help him summon aid for the injured woman he just left. Behind him, the squad car flashed after him. It's Siren screaming. Must find a phone. Must. Huh? What's that? Sounds like a. The squad car drew up alongside, forcing Arthur to the curb. The shrieks, the shrieks of brakes, and the dying whine of the siren echoed off the empty loft buildings. Officer, there's a woman back there. She. Okay, buddy, come out of there with your hands up, up high, and no funny business. <laughs> The precinct station buzzed with excitement. Arthur Keenan stood before the desk sergeant, his hair must, his clothes disheveled. He was flanked by the two radio car officers who arrested him. A detective shouted at a switchboard operator. Others stood about, glaring. What's your name, punk? Keenan, Arthur Keenan, but you got me all wrong. Shut up, you murdering rat. Try and locate St Lieutenant Staley, Charlie. Tell him we just picked up a hit and run. The woman he hit is dead. Yes, sir. Arthur began to sob. One of the detectives sneered at him. You made a big mistake trying to run away, Keenan. A big mistake. I didn't do it, I tell you. I was going for. Did you hear that, Becca? The f didn't do it. Tell him we got ways to make slobs like him confess, Mason. Why don't you save yourself a lot of grief, Keenan? Admit it. I didn't do it, I tell you. I was just. Here's the lieutenant, sir. He just got home. Hello, Lieutenant. This is Mason here. We just hauled in a hit and run. Officers Flag and Wiley caught him red-handed. Killed a woman. Killed, eh? Got a confession? Not yet, Lieutenant. The creep denies it. We're gonna work him over now. Thought dude might like to sit in. I'll be down as soon as my wife gets in, Mason. She went to a show. Ought to be back soon. All right, Detective Becca, he's all yours. Come on, Keenan, you and me and Mason, we're going to have a nice little chat. Well, I didn't do it, I tell you. So long, Lieutenant, I, I gotta go now. See you later. The room was dark, except for one brilliant light that hung above them. Arthur shook his head as they fired questions at him. They phone glass all around the body, Keenan. Your car's got a busted headlight. You still deny it? I broke that headlight last week. Please let me sit down. I'm tired. You'll stand, you f When you decide to admit it, you can sit down. I didn't do it. I didn't. How much did you have to drink, Keenan? You stank from it. I had two. Only two. I was at a party tonight. You could ask them. I only had two small drinks. You were drunk, weren't you, Keenan? You couldn't stop in time after you hit her. You got scared. You ran. No, no, she was there when I drove up. I was going for help. I, oh! Shut up, you're lying. Listen, punk, don't try to warm your way out of this. We'll make you admit it. I'm trying to, no, please. You're lying, you were drunk. 
You hit her so hard, you smashed her headlight. Get wise, Kenan. Save yourself some pain. Save us the trouble of getting it out of you. Admit it. I didn't do it. She was sad when I... You lied, prick. I'll make you talk. My arm, you're breaking it. Ow! Oh! Talk, Kenan, talk. Where is he? Where is that murder? Lieutenant! I just seen her. I just seen the woman he killed. It's my wife. My wife! What? She didn't she didn't come home. I got worried. I came down on a hunch. Did you hear that, Keenan? Hear who you killed? The lieutenant's wife, Keenan. Killing a cop's wife is as bad as killing a cop. You know what we do to cop killers, Keenan? Oh! You better talk, Keenan! Oh, I didn't do it! Ah, ah, cop killer! Ah! They hit him. They twisted his arms. They made him stand erect when he could barely stay on his feet. And all the while, the lieutenant sat there, watching, waiting. Talk, damn you! Admit it, Keenan! I, I didn't, I didn't do it! It went on like that for hours. His clothes were torn, his nose bleeding, his face battered and bruised. Other detectives took over. They worked in shifts, pummeling, threatening, cursing. The lieutenant just sat there, waiting. Stand up, you You killed it, Keenan! Admit it! No! 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 Night passed and dawn came. Inside the precinct, their work went on. The punishment continued. Lieutenant, uh, can I see you in m see you a moment? Sure, Doyle. Keep it up, you guys. Make him talk. Outside a little room with a single overhead light, the detective named Doyle whispered to the lieutenant. Got this lab report for you, sir. No blood on the car. Dents are old. Maybe a week. Glass fragments are from headlights of a standard manufacturer. So what, Doyle? Maybe he didn't do it, sir. Maybe you ought to go easy with him. He killed my wife, Doyle. He's gonna admit it. He could be telling the truth, Lieutenant. All we've got is his busted headlight as proof. Maybe his story is true. Maybe he did bust it last week when he hit the fence. Too much of a coincidence, Doyle. The boys will make him talk. You'll see. Sure, they'll make him talk. They could have make anybody talk. They've been growing him for 10 hours now. If I want your advice, I'll ask for it, Doyle. Watch what you say, or you'll find yourself pounding an east side beat again. The lieutenant went back into the dark room with the light. The grilling continued. No, no, please, please. Don't hit me with that light boy. <gasps> then admit it that you killed her, you dumb slob. Talk. Oh, I, I can't do it. Oh, won't you please believe me? <laughs> He's stubborn, Lieutenant. Here, give me that pipe. Let me convince him. Outside the grilling room, Detective Doyle winced as the lead pipe fell again and again, and the suspect's cries of pain drifted through the thick door. Talk, you! Oh, murdered! Talk! Uh, rat! Murdered! Uh, rat! Talk! Damn! <laughs> Arthur Keenan lay sprawled on his stomach, blood trickling from his toothless mouth. One eye was completely closed. The bones in his nose were splintered. His scalp had been opened. His hair was matted with sticky ooze. He sobbed. No more. I did Please. No more. Sign this, Keenan. Okay, Lieutenant, that wraps it up. Outside the dark room, Detective Doyle looked questioningly at Lieutenant Staley as he emerged. He talked, Doyle. He finally admitted it. I told you he would. Yes, sir. You did. Congratulations. I guess I was wrong. Lieutenant Staley went out of the station into the warm afternoon air. He stopped on the steps to light a cigar. Then he started for home. On the way, he stopped off at a store. When he came out, he carried a package. Upon reaching his house, the lieutenant went directly to his garage, where he unwrapped the new headlight he purchased. And after cleaning his wife's blood from his car, began removing the broken headlight in order to replace it. <laughs>